Hey guys, it's CJ from SmartKTai.com and it's time to take a look at the software of the Motorola Droid Bionic from Verizon Wireless. So first things first, let's turn off the display so we can see that famous screen off animation. Of course that was introduced with Gingerbread. Uh, not all Gingerbread devices have that feature, uh, but Motorola seems to like it and has been implementing it in its latest devices. So the new lock screen allows you to toggle between sound profiles and then of course we can swipe right to unlock. Uh, before we move on any further, let me remind you that the Droid Bionic features a 1 GHz Texas Instruments OMAP 4430 processor, that's dual core, and a full gig of RAM. Uh, performance is very, very good. If you swipe from home screen to home screen, you can see a very snappy performance, no lag at all. In fact, I would say it's even a little bit faster than what we got on the Droid 3. I'm not sure if that's all attributed to the newer hardware, but it could also be because of software optimizations uh, since that release. So very, very fast no matter where you go in the software. Of course, the Droid Bionic runs Android 2.3.4 Gingerbread and it has Motorola's custom UI. Now, I think this UI has come a long way. They used to call it Moto Blur. I'm not sure what they call it now. They dropped it down to Blur. Uh, now I'm not sure it even has a name, but I'm going to refer to it as Moto Blur anyway. Um, this UI has come a long way, uh, I think at least. Uh, we saw it in the Droid 3, it just seems a lot better. It seems like the hardware has finally caught up uh, to be able to run it without any lag, so you don't have to worry about uh, a slow performance or anything like that. You now have eye candy, as you can see some of it already, uh, and also some of the widgets are pretty usable now. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look around. Uh, we'll start with some of the widgets. So if you swipe down on the favorite contacts widget, it expands really quickly and then you can collapse it just as quickly. Very convenient feature there for your favorite contacts. Uh, same with the dock. If you swipe up on the bottom dock, you get an overview of your five home screens. You can jump to whichever screen you, you want really quickly. Moving on, if you see in between transitions from home screen to home screen, you get this little glare added to your widgets. Nice eye candy, very uh, sort of a subtle uh, addition there, but it makes for a better experience. If you look in the notification bar, I've mentioned this multiple times with other, other Motorola devices, but it has this nice semi-transparency effect when you pull the shade up and down. All right, so let's take a look around at some of the other widgets. Uh, we looked at contacts. Here we have a date and time uh, combo widget. Fortunately, tapping on it doesn't really do anything. I would like it uh, if it took it to the respective apps, but it doesn't do that. That's all right. You can have some shortcuts here. So here's the calendar application, for example. You can go into week mode, month mode, things of that nature. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to some other widgets before we go to apps though. Here we have a gallery widget that connects with your social media accounts. Here's another uh, calendar widget. This one will actually open the calendar, so that's nice. Here's a weather widget. Tapping on it, pull up some weather info. You can add multiple cities and you can uh, access detailed forecasts if you want to do that as well jump back. Another thing to go along with the eye candy, if you notice when you pick up a widget, you can actually move it around. Maybe it'll be easier with this news, news widget. But it sort of has a 3D animation. Notice all the icons move around as well. Very easy to change out the layout uh, just by picking up one widget and moving it around. Let's go back to the weather widget though. you can resize it. So notice as, as I'm resizing it, it adjusts uh, the information that's displayed. Pretty cool there. So let's tap out of there. Here's a news widget. So you have sort of have an RSS reader. And this is for smartktai.com. And you can get an article list view. 
really useful for those of you who like to stay up to date with all the latest news. All right, let's continue on with some of the other core applications. Here's the web browser as it runs on Verizon's 4G LTE network. Very fast network, uh, couldn't be happier with the performance. Uh, and we actually filmed a video uh, showing a demo and a speed test of the uh, fast network there. So you might want to check out that video. I'll include it in the description below. So here is smartktai.com loaded up. Let's go ahead and check out performance. Scrolling up and down. You can zoom in and out. And if you wanted to get the text to reflow, you just double tap on the screen. Now you have it all in one column for easy viewing. And you can pinch the zoom to get in closer if you want to do that. So let's check out a post here. Let that load up. This one has some uh, flash content on it, a YouTube video, so we'll load that in the browser to see how it performs. Let the page finish rendering first before we load it up. Alright, there we go. So let's press play on the video. Let that buffer up for a second. What's up, guys? And it should be good to go. So this is a review of uh, the game Real Steel that we recently filmed. Very cool game. And I filmed that on the Droid Bionic, so you might want to check out that video as well to see how uh, games perform on the device. So the video seems to be running very fine. I can even move around on the screen. The video still plays smoothly. Looks like I paused it there. Alright, so that's enough of the web browser. So let's move on. We have our email application here. Let's go ahead and tap on one so you can see what that looks like. Zoom in and out. Notice on the side here we have uh, multi-selection uh, for bulk deleting and moving emails. Convenience feature. We already checked out the browser. This device comes with the new Android market loaded up. We filmed a review of that as well, so you might want to check that out if you haven't seen the new Android market. Here's the dialer if you want to get a look at that. Recent calls or contacts and favorites. Text messages. Let me show you what that looks like. So when you get a message, uh, you get a chat bubble uh, and it has different colors uh, designated for the receiver and sender so you can uh, easily distinguish who said what uh, within a thread. Actually, let's go back to that. Check out the virtual keyboards on the device. Very large keyboard, easy to use. This is Motorola's multi-touch keyboard, uh, but if you don't want to use this one, you can actually swap it out for swipe. Now most of you have probably heard of this keyboard before, uh, but for those of you who haven't heard about it, it allows you to swipe from letter to letter without having to lift your finger. So you can really spell out words quickly uh, without having to type each individual letter out like you do with a traditional keyboard. So let's go ahead and test that out. I'm just going to type in this is a test. So it works just fine. Uh, let's go ahead and back out now and check out the camera application. So I'm going to tilt the device over. So here we have the Bionics camera application, pretty much what we saw on the Droid 3. Uh, we have a button to zoom in and out over here. If you press this button, that'll pull out your settings and options. Tap on it. Uh, we have the ability to take 8 megapixel pictures. If you want it in widescreen, it'll drop it down to 6 megapixels. You can also turn off the shutter tone if you don't like hearing that. Effects, different uh, screen effects here, green tint. <laughs> if you want to add some personalization there, let's go back to normal. You have different scenes, so you have auto, portrait, landscape, sport, uh, night portrait, sunset, macro, and steady shot. Then you have different camera modes, single shot, panorama, and multi-shot. Adjust the brightness and disable or enable flash 
or use auto flash. This button up here will switch between the rear cam camera and the VGA front facing camera. The middle button is your shutter button so that takes the pictures and then you can swap to your camcorder. Very similar options here of course like I showed you before. Uh, it can shoot up to 1080p HD. One of the main differences in the options here though is you have audio scenes. So depending where the subject is uh, you can adjust the audio so you have everyday use. Uh, you have outdoors, concert, narrative, and subject. And that basically takes advantage of the multiple microphones found on the device. So you have one over here, you have two on the back, they're all over the place. Check out some other options. Normal video, you can do a video message. Brightness, and of course you can use the uh, LED flash and turn it into a light. So that is the camera application. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to the next part of this review. And that would be the app tray. So not too much bloatware here. You can see we have uh, the Amazon Kindle app, Blockbuster. I believe you have a game or two. Let's Golf too. One thing I should note is you can install this game, so that's good. You don't want to have that on there. No problem, just get rid of it. Uh, you can't remove all bloatware though, unfortunately. You have some basic apps, Alarm, Calculator, Calendar, uh, City ID, Citrix. You have your camera and camcorder, of course, contacts, uh, DLNA support, move over. Here we have a file explorer built right in so you don't have to download one uh, from the Android market or anything like that. Let's see what else we got here. Mobile hotspot. If you want to pay for that, you can actually use your device's uh, internet and tether that to a laptop, computer, tablet, or another, another uh, device. You have, of course, Google Maps. Google Navigation. NFL Mobile. Slacker, Quick Office, you have a built-in task manager as well, so if something's acting up, you can check it out and close it down. Vcast apps, Zumocast, YouTube, uh, and Verizon Navigator if you want to subscribe to that. So that was the software overview of the Motorola Droid Bionic from Verizon Wireless. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.